And we're back with some more bass loving. And up first, we have Latviga. Uh, with this map with 3,400 cycles under the belt for acidic dump. Now, uh, Latviga actually was in an episode a while back. I think it was episode 7? Yeah, yeah, I'll link episode 7 on the top right. But uh, Latviga has already submitted a map previously, and that was, that was back when they were still getting used to the game. I think at this point we can comfortably say they've gotten very, very, very used to the game. Oh my god. Let's uh, let's just start in the uh, the centre of the base here and speed it up a bit so we can see this base in a more lively fashion. Uh, so we've got nice comfy beds for everyone so the, the dupes can curl up in the cots and sleep like cats. Everyone seems to enjoy that. Uh, oh, and over here we've got our cooling solution. That cooling solution there just keeps that water down there nice and chill. Why is that? Why does that need to be chill? Well... There's a giant cooling solution going throughout the entire base. And wait, when I say the entire base, I mean, yeah, this entire base is nice and temperature controlled. This is one of those really comfy bases for duplicants to live in. That's 26 degrees the whole way around. And that liquid going through there, that's super coolant. There's no half measures anywhere here. This base is full measures all the way. We've even got a few uh, pips in here and a nice little, I think that's, is that a? Yeah, that's a nature reserve back there. Hmm, tricksy. Anyway, so we've got our nature reserves, we've got all our buildings, we've got our great halls, we've got everything going on here in this little base, and this, oh, and there's a retired gym. No one's getting in and out of there anymore because everyone's been skilled up. Down here, though, this is where we get into our industrial brick. So the industrial brick here has a, a few good things going on for it. You've got the normal metal refineries that dump their heat up into the steam room up here. But we've also got a bunch of thermal regulators being used for cooling. I know. I, it's so rare you see this. But what they do is they run a bunch of cooling through here and cool down this center area which is, well, a bunch of petroleum uh, surrounded by lead tiles. So what this results in is, yeah, this entire place is just chill. Just chilling. The entire area is cooled down by this. Kind of impressive. Uh, they've got uh, coal generators here for your emergency backup power. Then you've got your hydrogen generators, natural gas generators, and petroleum generators. But most of this is retired because all of the power duties have been taken over, taken over by another device. This is sort of the... Uh, this is what was used to build up the base. And this is what was used to refine all the metals for the base. And this is what was used to produce an awful, awful lot of insulation and super coolant. <laughs> a few other things as well. But we'll cover we'll cover all of that later. Just below the industrial brick, we've got your water storage. This is your clean water storage. This is coming from two well, a cool steam vent, or one or two cool steam vents, and uh, oh, a water geyser. So all of the water comes in at 95C. Or is it... Yeah, there it is coming in at 93C or so. A little bit of heat is bled off along the way and then dumped in here. But we got a little cooling loop going between the two, so it's exchanging heat with the polluted water tank, which is a bit cooler. This is coming from some slush geysers and some regular geysers. Or, oh, wait a minute. Where is it over here? No spoilers. Ah, stop. Avoid the spoilers. Uh, yeah, we got a cool slush geyser that's dumping some of its chill in there. And, yes, we've got a... We've got a petroleum boiler. One of my favorite designs, of course. I love petroleum boilers. And we've got your, your standard issue Robo Miner... Uh, petroleum boiler with counterflow heat exchanger. There is an enormous pool of petroleum somewhere that's uh, got some storage going on. We'll have a look at that in a bit. But you'll also notice there's a lot of plastic going around the place. I mean, an awful lot of plastic. An awful, awful, awful lot of plastic. Uh, Ludwig's last base they sent me, they, they advised that they had to stop because the, the game was getting so slow. So they did a lot of bricking up to try and speed up the game here, though. The amount of statues. Look at all of the statues everywhere. It is Statueville no matter where you go in this base. It's kind of amazing. Uh, uh, now, we've got a... Ooh. Yes, leaky oil fisher. It's very rare anyone bothers to take care of these. I mean, I think I've only ever bothered to tame these once. They, they come out quite hot. So I think we'll have a quick cover of it. It comes out at 326 degrees, but all you do is you let it roll down through here. The diamond window tiles soak up a bunch of the heat. It... Well, it gets transferred to the steam, the steam goes through the steam turbine, and it pops out the other end, and it's nice and chill. What that thermal regulator is doing there? That is, is that providing cooling to the steam turbine? Ah, yes. So that cools down the steam turbine, and then the crude oil is dumped off with the rest of the crude oil to be turned into petroleum and the petroleum butter. Over here, we've got the main power supply for the base. And you'll notice that is... That's an awful, awful, awful lot of natural gas generators. Like, an absolutely gargantuan amount of natural gas generators. One of the, the fun things I like about this is there was no attempt to put in an atmosphere here. This is all this polluted oxygen just appears to have been off gassed from the polluted water that the natural gas generators are putting out. But where is all this natural gas coming from? Oh, wait, no. Cooling first for this. The cooling has been provided by this device over here, which is running on super coolant and is pretty much constantly trying to turn out chilling just to keep this whole thing nice and cool. Yeah, 
Cooling down this many natural gas generators is a pain in the butt. There's so many of them that by the time the coolant gets from one side to the other, it's usually raised by quite a few degrees. I mean, it's coming in here at minus 12 and it comes out at just minus one almost. So it got 11, it got 11 degrees warmer going through there. That's a little bit tricky to take care of all of that. But where is all that natural gas coming from, you might ask? Well, this is a sour gas, a sour gas boiler. What's happening here is uh, petroleum comes in here, but it's been it's limited down here to about four and a half kilos. This is uh, running yeah four and a half kilos of petroleum comes in. It weaves its way all the way down here, exchanging heat with the the sour gas that's coming up. So the petroleum hits the bottom plate here, and the amount of heat from here boils it into sour gas. You know, let's grab some petroleum there. Where is it? Properties uh, vaporization point five hundred and thirty eight point nine. So once it hits that temperature. It turns to sour gas, and then it's sort of, well, it's going to be hard to tell with the temperature overlay because the whole thing's going to be red. But then that uh, petroleum, which is coming in here quite cold, about, let's say, 200 degrees. By the time it gets to the bottom, it's close enough to boiling point that it flashes to sour gas, forces its way up this tunnel. Now, uh, you'll notice that it's actually quite pressurized down here at 80, and then it slowly gets weaker and weaker as it goes up, and then it flows down this sector, and you notice it's getting colder and colder all the way down. Yeah, these things are pretty complicated and very finicky to set up. It takes a lot of effort and time and knowledge to get these things working. But it flows down here and eventually it gets so cold it solidifies or liquefies. You'll see here you have to condense it down to minus one or chill it down to minus 161.5 plus there's another two degrees of that. So it's 163, 64, somewhere in there. Once it hits that temperature, it turns into liquid methane. Methane? Methane? Uh, who cares? But uh, yeah, once you've got that, you can then pump that out here. It goes out the other side, and then it turns back into... It starts to get heated up. How does it get heated up? Well, the sour gas coming in exchanges heat with these metal tiles through the temperature shift plates. So the moment that the, uh, the methane gets pumped across, there's a blob of it there, it sort of instantly flashes to methane gas, which is actually natural gas. Methane turns back into natural gas, which flows all the way up here. And uh, we can see the sort of chill thing here and as it flows back up here it's exchanging temperature back and forth across with the sour gas so the sour goes, gas gets chilled down or pre-chilled and then the natural gas gets heated up as it goes up you don't care about the natural gas getting heated up you're going to burn that off it's sort of a, a way of here you're recycling the heat from the sour gas to dump into the petroleum then you're recycling the heat the last of the heat from the sour gas to heat up the natural gas while simultaneously recycling the chill you've generated down here into the sour gas it's it, it's why these things are so complicated to set up you're trying to heat something up and still counterflow the heat with it and then you want to cool cool something down while counterflowing the heat with it and then combine it all together into one system that doesn't generate too much heat or too much chill which is why this tepidizer is down here the source of the cooling is these thermal aqua tuners right they cool down this super coolant flows down here and goes down into this box where it was, you know, very, very cold. Minus 231 degrees. This box has uh, airlocks here, these mechanized airlocks that close to inject the chill in here so that make sure that all of this methane stays liquid instead of flashing back to sour or back to gas. And then the heat produced up here is dumped into the petroleum to flash it into sour gas. So this generates the heat to flash to sour gas. This generates, while simultaneously generating the chill down here to keep everything cool. Now, you're going to get more chill than you get heat. So you put in this tepidizer down here to dump in some extra heat if it gets too cold down here. Yes, you can have things get too cold in this. And all of that results in natural gas that goes up here, gets pumped out, and gets sent down to your power brick. Ah, look at all of that glorious power being produced. You know what? Let's grab a power wire and see what we're looking at here on this grid. Power produced 48 kilowatts of a potential of 72.51. There's just... Yeah, that is, it's ludicrous. It gets to this kind of power levels. You're just looking for projects where you can just throw enormous amounts of power at things. Still, hell of an impressive build. Those take a long time to put together and a lot of effort and a lot of super coolant. That's an entire pool of super coolant right there. That's a lot of super coolant to just leave lying around in a box. These are definitely late game construction projects. Here we have a, a gold volcano tamer. I love these ones. They, uh, they go down here and it rotates down to these in order. All right, here we go. This bottom door should open and drop out any gold that's gotten in there. You know what? Let's slow this down just a bit so we can see it as it goes through. Once that door opens, ah, there's the gold that drops out. It's down to 120. And this gold up here is, ooh, that's actually really chill already. Now these doors should, this bottom door should now close. Middle door stays open. Gold drops in. Top door should close now. Go on, seal her in. And then once that's sealed in, that gold in there will get trapped in the middle once this door closes. 
and that will allow it to be, well, you're squeezing the heat right out of the metal. Well, assuming the door will close at some point. There we go. And the same procedure will repeat every time. Just a nice way of squeezing all the heat out of the gold. If you really want it nice and cool, works really, really well. And we'll throw in some a little bit of automation down here. And what's the temperature looking like? Yeah, there's some chilling going on down here to make sure that that gold comes out incredibly chill. What's that down to? 17C? Okay, you, you went overboard, Latviga. I love it. I love it. You just said, you know what? I want that gold to be super chill. I want it to be so cold my dupes hurt themselves when they pick it up. Uh, same thing over here. We got a second one of these. And uh, even a mining drill, just in case the gold ever twitches too. Sometimes the gold can turn into tiles. It's just... Uh, I have no idea why. It seems to be very irregular, but it can happen. So there's those two mining drills up there to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, and uh, just to have a, a quick look here, look at the temperature overlay on this map. Everywhere is so cold. <laughs> like, okay, excluding that sour gas boiler over there, you've got this uh, power brick is, is icy cold. The whole industrial area is icy cold. The main base is temperature chilled down. I mean, okay, we, we got the petroleum boiler over here, which is pretty warm, but that's to be expected. And for petroleum storage, I forgot to cover this. How much petroleum do you really need? L l look at that up there. I'd be worried about integer overflow errors or something like that. That's just getting up to ludicrous levels. Okay, it's gone beyond ludicrous levels. It also explains why there's so much plastic around the place. It's probably the most plentiful material on the map right now if you convert that petroleum into plastic. Oh my god. Anyway, moving swiftly along, you'll notice this odd thing here. What is this pool of water doing here? Well, that's your first mistake. It's not water. That is super coolant. Yes. Try and soak that in. That is an entire tank of super coolant. <laughs> what is it doing there? I have no idea. All I know is that when it comes to making super coolant, it takes 49 and a half kilos of petroleum, which is fine. One kilo of fullerene, which you get from space, which, okay, can be obtained. And 49 and a half kilos of gold. So you have to look at this as half of this, half of this tank is liquid gold. There, there, th that's what it took to make this. So if you took this tank and cut it in half, that that would be how much gold it would pull up to. That's how much gold it took to make this. That's why I showed you the two gold volcanoes first. There's an incredible amount of gold tied up in this. Just, wow, that, that's just so much gold. Of course, you can't ever have too much power, right? Well, maybe. We've got one, two, three, four volcanoes over here all pouring into this one area. And all of them are just hooked up to three stream turbines, which are pretty much going flat out most of the time. This is one of the more efficient uh, steam turbine magma harvesting devices. But yeah, there's no way this is going to keep up with that many volcanoes. That's way too much magma for this thing to eat. You need probably two or three of them. Uh, simple enough system. Magma pours in here, turns into debris. Debris gets caught in the door and squeezed. And it uh, results in the soda being a, a heat storage area over here. Uh, yeah, the temperature overlays are not great on, in this game. But... The temperature gets stored over here, it's like 700 and something degrees, and when temperature needs to be injected, this door engages and dumps temperature into this entire area. Very simple, very efficient, very, very much magma. Oh my god. Okay. Then, we'll flip across over here, you've got your, your jet suits where everyone goes through when they want to... Oh, cool. Your, your jet suits that everyone goes across when they're going up into space, and they switch back into their regular suits when they're coming back in here. And, of course, your Rodriguez, because when you want all the oxygen except absolutely zero substitutes. <laughs> My god, that's so much oxygen. Oh, yeah, and wait till we do the piping overlays on this monstrosity of a base. Anyway, let's uh, have a quick look over here. Here is a battery box, and it's using the jumbo batteries. There's been no attempt to control power in this base. It's generating so much power, there's no need to turn things on and off anymore. In that case, why bother using the, uh, the expensive refined metal batteries? You could, of course, it would probably... You can afford the refined metals when you obviously have that much liquid gold lying around the place. But yeah, just throw together these and they generate lots of heat, which then gets eaten by the steam turbines up at the top. The steam turbine activates at 200. This one activates at 210. This is just, yeah, let, let's just get this and turn this into more energy because why not? Because that's what the space does. A few other little quirks. This one over here I really like. This is a bottomless Rodriguez. Its whole purpose is just to generate a crap ton of hydrogen. Uh, where is it? Yeah, there's the hydrogen storage system. So as you can see, it has lived up to generating crap tons of hydrogen. You just dump water into this. All the oxygen floods out the bottom. Uh, don't worry about mesh tiles. It's, it's misconstrued that mesh tiles can let gas escape through them. I know that's a common misconception that's still left over from a, a previous version of the game. But yeah, those mesh tiles don't let gas escape through the back of them when you're in the vacuum of space. Don't worry about it. So the, the oxygen flows down here and just gets sucked out into the vacuum of space. And the top half, you get the hydrogen, which you send into your storage. But normally, when you turn them off, you let it all escape. Here, there's doors hooked up. It's all automated so that 
these doors don't open until the hydrogen is required. At which point, yeah, the doors open, it starts generating, but it keeps the hydrogen in there in between operations so that you don't have to go through any of that annoying startup where you get the wrong gases in different places. Very nice little, very nice little twist. I'm stealing that idea. Definitely stealing that idea. I love it. Uh, over here, you got your your shovels, and I, oh, I am already way over on this, but <laughs> let's have a quick rundown of this uh, shovel farm. I really like this design. Uh, shovels, they never get overcrowded, so you can dump as much eggs as you want in here. But all that happens in this one is... Where is it? Give me the overlays. Yeah, all of the regulars get dumped in here. They feed on that. Any of these uh, eggs that drop in here get picked up by these two auto sweepers and dumped onto the conveyor loader. The conveyor loader sends them across here. And then when it gets to the shutoff, there's uh, an automation signal sent to it, depending on this critter sensor. This critter sensor is set to 33, so if there's 33 critters and eggs, a, a total of all of that... Then, or sorry, 30. If there's 30 critters slash eggs in here, then what happens is it dumps them in, it, ah, it dumps them over here into this evolution chamber so that those shovels can be immediately drowned and, you know, evolved into meat. However, if there's not enough, it just keeps dumping the eggs in the corner where they're just out of reach of the auto sweeper. That way you can have easy population control with no real worries. It's just a nice, simple, dumb way of making sure that you, you, we keep about the relevant amount of shovels as you can support. But, uh... Another few quirks of dealing with shovels because they are nightmares to deal with in, in many respects. They can vomit regolith into doorways, so there's no doorways on the bottom floor. If you had a doorway here, they can potentially vomit regolith into it and then drill through the regolith. Even though they can't drill through the doors, if there's regolith entombing the door, they can drill through the regolith. Kind of an annoyance. Uh, as well as that, they can vomit regolith from here and it can end up in this tile. So you can end up walling this area in because they'll vomit regolith up here and then your dupes can't get in and out. So mining drill on top. That's where that lump of regolith came from, and that's why that mining drill is there, to make sure this entire top half of the area stays clean. That's why this uh, is exactly this wide. Oh, beautiful. Love it. Love it. Anyway, uh, oh yes, now we got your, your pyramid solar design combined with an awful lot of sea miners and regolith removal. There is a crap ton of regolith removal going on there. That entire top part of the map is getting all the regolith removed. And not only that, Everything's cooled down using CO2. So all the CO2 from the bottom of them, that uh, that sour gas, or that's turned into natural gas that gives off CO2, little packets of it are dumped up here. And what that allows is it allows temperature to transfer with the auto sweepers. It's all measured out. You don't want to dump too much or you'll cause interference with the space scanners. The space scan quality here, like, uh, you can see it going up and down because there's a, a, the CO2 gases interfere with the scanners. But honestly, when you have that many scanners, you're probably okay dumping a little bit of CO2 in the way. Now, there's a few things that I, I don't know what are going on here. There's a, there's some there's some magma here for some reason. I have no idea why. I, I think magma was dumped in here and then dumped in there. Maybe, maybe it was taken from space. But yeah, there's a, a big pool of magma up here. I'm still trying to figure out what that's doing there. No idea. Uh, you've got your liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen build up here. And there's an awful lot of backup storage. Not only is there an awful lot of backup storage, all of the pipes here, that's so much insulation. 3,400 cycles is a long time to get a lot of insulation going on, and dear lord, there is so much of it. So this entire area, there's, what, 5, 10, 15 tons of liquid hydrogen there, just waiting to get dumped into the rockets at any moment. Also, this, uh, yeah, there's co this cooling solutions here. Oh my god, so much going on. One second. All right, this cooling device little here, over here, s cools down this box. That box has two lumps of petroleum rolling through it. One of them goes across cooling down all the sea miners. There's a... Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, there's little blobs of liquid behind those petroleum miners to make sure that they get cooled down. Uh, at the same time, it also goes down... Where is it? Here? Uh, another one goes down here and cools down this battery box and that plug socket over there because... Yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot of wiring. Oh, I can't wait to see the wiring map on this one. Ooh, slow that down. We've got meteors inbound. And then we've got all our rockets over here, the enormous quantity of them. And all of the heat gets dumped into this steam room that then gets dumped into these steam turbines over here. Because, you know, you can never have enough power. And just because shovels are shovels, you'll notice down here there's a, some meat. There's like loads of meat back here because that shovel has been living in there. It drilled through, it's drilling through the Rafik ma Mafic rock and going top, bottom, top, bottom. But occasionally it dies in here, leaves meat behind. Occasionally it dies in here and leaves meat, meat behind. But it can't get out of this area because there's, well, bunker tiles and steel all around it, or m m gold tiles all around it, so it can't get out any further. Pretty awesome. Eh, now, let's go have a look at the overlay, shall we? Wait, 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 before we do that, uh, do you know the way you have way too much power and you want to burn it off? Well, I'm not sure what they're doing here. Well, I kind of think I know. They're dumping a bunch of power into this to chill down the, the core. They're, they're effectively making a, an icy core down here by just liquefying or solidifying ice. And this is what is... 
uh, yeah, this is a verdant map, so it doesn't normally have frozen core down at the bottom of it. But yeah, today it does. Uh, <laughs> that also explains why there's, where is this other design? Yeah, there's this design over here. I'm pretty sure this was another one of the cooling devices that was used to freeze a bunch of liquid over here. Because this only reaches that far. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I assume you're just freezing down water because you can? Well, fair enough, Latviga. Having learned from my last few maps, I'm going to pause this while I do it because every time I hit the piping overlay on these things, on the larger maps, I have a tendency, to, it has a tendency to crash the gate. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm really glad I paused that. Yeah, let's have a quick look. That's the cooling loop for the the power generation. That is the sour gas boiler. That is a central... What's this centralized bit here? Okay, we got crude oil, polluted water, and clean water all flowing up the middle in a sort of a main bus design. Yeah, petroleum boiler over there. Your cooling loops for cooling down the, the frozen core that you're making. Oh, main cooling loops for the base. Jesus, that is so much piping. That should crash your game every time you look at it if you're not careful. Oh, temperature overlay as well. Look at that. You can see the red hot plastic that's around the place. But barring that, the rest of the map is surprisingly cool. Uh, oh, yeah, where are you? I want to see, did we do we leave any minerals behind? Yeah, uh, there's... Wow, I don't think you left any minerals behind. <laughs> Holy, wait, no. I think we got one down here. Bottom left. Would you look at that? It's a lump of fossil that escaped the roundup. <laughs> and it's in the frozen biome. That's an actual... Yeah, that's a frozen biome, and it's just that fossil spawned on the wrong side. Oh, well. Yeah, that's good preservation. I never would have thought to preserve those. Okay, I never preserve anything on my maps. And here we have the power overlay. Dear Lord. <laughs> that is... That's very human. Very, very, very human. I approve. Dear Lord, let's just have a quick trace of this power spine. What the? Okay, yeah, there's, there's mains power going over there. Sort of a main core power spine going up through here. Yeah, so that's the main core. And all the rest of this is runoffs. Jesus. Okay, that's an awful lot of wiring. Trying to imagine the amount of resources that went into that. Anyway, thanks for that one, Ludviga. That was uh, very interesting. I have no idea what your addiction to supercoolant is, but that is the largest pool of supercoolant I have ever seen. I, I try and keep these base loading videos to about 30 minutes. Occasionally I go over a bit. I already went way over on the last base and just taking one look at this base, you can tell, yeah, I'm definitely going way over on this video today. <laughs> look at that empty space. You know what? Let's uh, let's grab up in the gas overlay and hope we don't crash out the game here. Wow. Yeah, there, there's all the carbon dioxide. There's a whole bunch of oxygen and... I, I'm not even sure what's going on down here. There is, there's a gas supply down here. That's a, a bunch of electrolyzers that are spitting out oxygen at the bottom, and the hydrogen is harvested at the top and put into here, where it is compressed by a door compressor. And there's a whole bunch of compressed hydrogen down here for the rocketry program, probably. Probably? Well, it goes somewhere anyway. All, all I know is this is just spewing out a bunch of oxygen here, and I have no idea why. <laughs> Maybe just to pressurize the map because so much of it has is just covered in carbon dioxide. That's uh yeah, that's ludicrous. I was I was also advised by the uh the owner of the map that uh wait, wait, uh, where's my manners? Uh, this map was sent to me into me by a name I'm going to mangle. Uh Tenom T E N O I M. I'd almost pronounce that Tenomin, but Tenom Tenomin. And this is called As the Base. Uh, other are referred to as Fortress, and it's a rhyme with a frozen core and geoactive. Uh, right here, though, you'll see one of the common features of this base is there is a lot of liquid compression and gas compression going on. Liquid pours down here. It gets pushed by this door, this door, this door, all the way across. And you'll notice down here, there, there's just so much. This this game crashes a lot, according to Tanam, and I'm pretty sure it's because you're getting integer overflows here because the gas, the compression is just getting way too high. Um, yeah, and then you've got, of course, your your water weed down here, because of course we do. <laughs> uh, let's start on some of the simpler stuff. So we got this, which uh, I'm not really sure what it's doing, but I think it's it's gas, it's oxygenating the entire map. Then we have this over here, which is an oil well. There's three of these around the map, and it's also infinite liquid compression. All the oil overflows here, gets caught in here, and the doors compress it up. One of the downsides, unfortunately, is all the natural gas gets caught in here as well, and when the water flows in or the oil flows in, it sort of well, it's sort of getting crushed in between the tiles. So I think this whole area here is just full of natural gas. But then it sort of backs out. Uh, I'm not sure. The natural gas ends up crushed down here as well. So maybe I think it all goes through. Actually, 
Yes, you know what? I was reading that incorrectly. All of the natural gas can flow through there, so it eventually will end up back in here and then get compressed by that gas compressor on that side. Uh, over here, cool steam vent. Same thing going on, but there is a little bit of cooling for this one. You know what? Let's find out where all that cooling is coming from. Which is... <laughs> there's so much piping around this base. Ah, here we are. That goes back to this area where we have a cup of cooling loops hooked up to a steam turbine. Ah, okay, that's why all of that is there. Okay, we're learning something new. <laughs> uh, so that goes up there and cools there. Then we have a polluted water vent over here. Same thing again. Polluted water pours over the edge. And then, you know, liquid compressor as well. There is so much water there. And oh, so much germs. Dear Lord, just the amount of resources compressed up around the map. Like between this, 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 and the oil. I, I just don't know. That's a ridiculous amount of resources. We'll come back down to the bottom right. That That's going to take a lot longer to deal with. Let's have a quick look at the core base. Or, you know what, I, I'm not even sure. This is the core base. It's a very unusual design. You notice the carpets, actually. Are they made of ah, granite carpeting? There we go. So the granite carpeting for the little bit of decor bonus. Let's, uh, let's have a quick look at that. Oh, I forgot to do that in the last map, too. But there's the, the decor for the base. A couple of showers in the middle, your toilets, your sinks. Are these one-way? I'm going to use it. Yeah, they're all one-way doors to make sure that the, the dupes wash their hands when they're going in and out. Uh, over here, you've got your kitchen and the subterranean storage full of CO2 to make sure nothing goes off. That way you can get away with unpowering your fridges, which, let's face it, 90% of us do. We find it weird to find a powered fridge more than anything. Now, there's a lot of... Uh, there is an enormous use of shipping rails. Just ludicrous amounts of shipping rails. Just look at that. They're everywhere. Right? There's, there's four of them on this side. Uh, Oh, there's also a bunch more up there. They're also being used for heat transfer, food transfer, all sorts of transfers. But no, wait, wait, base, base. So then you've got all your basic rooms in here. You've got your great halls, uh, bedrooms, washrooms, bathrooms, all that. Like, I love the way it alternates on each floor for each bedroom. A nice little setup. Uh, also a medical room, which is very rare, and a recreational room. I don't think I've ever used a recreational room. I have, I'm have. i terminally lazy about these things. Anyway, then you've got your shovel farms over here. All right, the game crashed again. This is the second time the game has crashed on me since I've, uh, I've started this. Uh, so the game crashed again, but here we are with the shovel farm. Now this, oh my God, th there's a lot of automation going on here. But from what I can tell, there's two critter sensors, one here and one here, and that controls what happens. Eventually, uh, a shovel is going to wander in here, and when it does, if it's uh, there's too many voles in here, as in it goes, you're above the uh, critter count we would particularly like. Then what happens is the door gets closed and the vole gets trapped in there. And then the vole, you know, evolves because they're trapped in there. And once their, their uh, evolution is complete, the critter sensor will no longer detect them and the door can open back up again. Very nice. Though I wonder how they deal with the, the regular ending up in there. No idea. But um, shipping rail-wise, yes. Dear Lord... What is this? Genetic ooze? 19 kilos? Where are you going? Oh, wait, that's going to somewhere else. Look at the amount of stuff that's ending up dropped over here. Let's have a quick look at the resource tally. Yeah, somewhere in the ludicrous to absolutely ludicrous range. I, I'm not exactly sure where in, in the precise ludicrous range it is, but it's somewhere pretty high up there. Yeah, then we, over here, we've got your poke shells. I'm not even sure what's going on here with this one. I've been trying to trace where it goes, but I'm not, I, I'm not really too sure what's going on with the eggs. No one in here seems angry, so I assume they're getting whipped out. Yeah, I searched around. I can't figure out what's going on with the eggs. As far as I can tell, they just go up here and get dumped up in this section. Which makes me, leads me to believe the eggs get dumped up there, they get incubated, and then once they're finished incubating, they get dropped down here and just in a drop-off. That could result in them being angry quite a lot of the time. Uh, over here, you've got your standard issue Draco farm. Well, a Draco farm. Uh, it's all chlorine in the environment, so you don't worry about regrowing the coats. This is just more about, you know, you'll get the occasional bit of reed fiber out of them, but it... it you get it once a life cycle. You're not really too worried. Uh, over here, you've got uh, pepper nuts. Nothing too crazy. This, though, is a little bit odd. These uh, little chambers down here. It took, me f it took me a few minutes to figure out what was going on here. This is the industrial brick. Uh, it's the hot version of the industrial brick. So this whole place has got a lot of temperature shift plates. And all the heat generated by everything is just eventually dumped up into the steam turbines. Now, you'll notice that there's these petroleum generators over here, and they are going to be kicking out carbon dioxide. Let's check gas overlay. So you'll see the carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide flows down here, and then across into this area. Ah, that one's triggered. This detects carbon dioxide, and when it does, it opens, compresses the carbon dioxide into a corner, and crushes it. So instead of pumping the carbon dioxide up to the top of the map, you simply destroy it. Problem solved. Destruction. Simplest method of getting rid of just about anything.
You can also do the same with liquids and things, but it's just a, a door crusher for destroying something you don't want. Okay, it'll only work with liquids and gases, it won't work with solids. Now, I, I do pause this game a lot. Sorry about that. It's just uh, if I let this run for too long, I'm worried it's going to crash again. Let's have a quick look at the piping here because it's kind of mental. All right, we got a, a couple of cooling loops up here. They go and cool the cool down the steam turbines up at the top of this contraption of this hot, well, hot industrial brick. Ah, industrial sauna. That was the name, industrial sauna. Uh, over here, you've got the the piping. This this crazy massive piping here. This is to bleed off the heat from the metal refinery. So anytime the metal refineries activate, the oil going through them will get dumped out here and go across these loops. And they actually have overflow, so they'll just keep circulating. You'll see there's still the odd blob on some of these still circulating round and round in circles to make sure it cools down sufficiently before it's put back into the machines. Uh, the, the molten glass, that just drops straight out in the ground because this is in a hot industrial brick. You don't care about the heat. Also, the thermal aqua tuners, they're just stuck right in here in a pool of liquid to help them off, uh, well, to absorb the heat, just to help radiate it into the environment. This whole thing is just an energy-producing machine. Yeah, I love them. I, I love in hot industrial bricks. I know they're crazy to build, but oh, they're so much fun. Uh, after that, we want to see where all that petroleum is coming from, right? Because that petroleum, oh, it also goes up to the top of the map, but it comes all the way from over here past the main base, which is cooled down by an awful, awful lot of crude oil. There is just so much piping everywhere. Maybe that's what's crashing the game as well. There's there's a lot of moving parts going on in this base everywhere. Uh, this is a petroleum boiler. So you've got your magma up here. It flows down here. This gives you magma, uh, well, igneous rock debris that gets dropped down here and gets compressed up. This gives you temperature control, this injects the heat, and there's it's not currently active, probably because it's just full. There is lots and lots of petroleum right here. How much have we got in that storage area? Uh, that's... We didn't let it compre finish compressing up. We're up to 1,200 and something. Get yeah, just so much petroleum. There's so much resources everywhere. This has got to be what's crashing the game. These things, there's so many of them around the place. One of them's eventually hit max and just uh, the integer overflow is crashing the game. For chill out locations, we have your vertical wind tunnel combined with some beach chairs because, of course, why not? When they sit in the beach chairs, it's uh, an on switch for the sun lamps. I like that. It's a very simple way of making sure the sun lamps only turn on when you need them as opposed to just having them on 24-7. Oh, hatch farms. Vertical hatch farms. This is always a nice one. I've never got around to doing vertical hatch farms myself. It, it's just easier to do horizontal at the start and then I'm too lazy to change them. But vertical hatch farms usually mean you can stack some extra stuff in there if you really want to. Plus, I think they've got a nice artistic approach on this one. Next up. We have the world's most dangerous game. What we have here is a liquid lock. Through here, you can get in with the atmosphere and all that, but a liquid lock through here. And this liquid lock allows you access to this room in here. And that is the liquid compressor. And this crude oil, this, uh, there's 800 and something kilos there, 400 kilos there. Yeah, this crude oil here is containing that much, how much water is that? Oh my God, that's uh, 2,111 tons, right? In, the, in just that tile. So that's, 2,000 tiles of water in one tile. If this liquid lock were to fail, that would explode out of here like a cannon and flood the entire base. Like I said, the world's most dangerous game. Because you can. Anyway, moving along, we've got a sour gas boiler, and this is a completely different design to our previous one on the other map. Whew, okay, there is a lot going on here. Firstly, we'll just go through, there's uh, some shipping rails here. These are used to transfer heat. It's a very handy way to transfer heat because shipping rails are really just promiscuous as all hell with their heat transfer. So you put some items going across them, get them in a continuous loop, and boom, you've got perfect heat transfer. So let's, uh, let's figure out what's going on here. Crude oil drops down, flows all the way through here, down here, all the way down here. At this point, it's going to turn to petroleum. We'll cover where the heat is coming from in a minute. And then after it's turned to petroleum, it flows down here and eventually flows into where these two aqua tuners are. And these aqua tuners heat it up enough that it flashes eventually to sour gas and it counterflows up. And as it counterflows up, it exchanges heat with the crude oil coming down. So, well, and the petroleum. The petroleum flashes from crude to petroleum right about there, it seems, is the temperature. The temperature gradient that causes it. And it goes all the way back up here, exchanging heat with the crude. So the crude starts off... Actually, let's check what temperature the crude is when it first comes in. Crude comes in at... 30C crude? Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, so 30C crude it comes in at. By the time it drops down to here, it's already 170. By the time it gets down to this pool just before the end, it's 491. And then these uh, chill it down the last of the way. 
Now the chill from these, it's all dumped over here in this ice box. But yeah, that sour gas counter flows all the way up. And this helps drain out the last of the heat. So it's about 160, 170 degrees when it leaves here. And then it passes underneath the steam turbines. By the time it gets out to the other side, 125C. Because that's as much heat as the steam turbines elite. Then it goes through here and there's some gas pressure sensors. What's going on is it gets down here where it's going to be cooled down into to liquid meth methane. So it can be turned into hydrogen or into natural gas. And these doors open and close depending on how much pressure there is. If there's too much pressure, as in this is not keeping up, the doors will close to stop more sour gas flowing in. And there's sort of uh, two breakpoints here. This one tells when the pressure is too low or, well, too high here and too high there. The doors get closed to stop the flow of sour gas. Over here, sort of a similar system. There's a hydro, hydro sensor here. And if there's too much petroleum in this location, it stops the incoming oil. So that will stop the incoming crude oil if there's already too much petroleum here and these have not had enough time to flash it all to sour, to sour gas. Whole thing seems to run quite stably. Oh, and of course, you've got a, a little super coolant... Uh, liquid lock over here when you get to temperatures that are minus 80 and such like that that every liquid in the game is just a solid at that state so you you have to use super coolant liquid locks when it gets too cold it's just one of those fun things where it's like yes i'm going to use this incredibly expensive difficult to manufacture material as, as a liquid lock because nothing else will survive the temperatures anyway all of that is uh, sent up here and you have of course even more gas compression there's a there's a lot of natural gas in here not as much as some of the other things that are going around but yeah, there's a lot of compression going on. Also, some toilets. Why are these toilets here? You know what? I got nothing. I have no idea why these toilets are there. Well, there's a dupe that's using them. Ashcan. Well, where are the schedules set up, maybe? Maybe the scheduling will give us a... Nope, not a clue. Let, let's see where Ashcan goes after this. If they go straight to lunch... I, I want to find out if they do go straight to lunch. Yeah, that didn't work. Game crashed again. Ah, uh, yeah. Enable sandbox mode and deleted some liquids, but it still keeps crashing. This game is incredibly unstable right now. Probably due to the enormous amount of stuff going on. Uh, the natural gas from over here, though, from the, uh, the sour gas boiler, all of that is sent over here into these natural gas generators, which, you know, it's just one part of the enormous amount of power being produced on this map. Though, interestingly enough, the carbon dioxide from here goes up here, gets dumped into this section, and then uh, this door compressor just destroys it all. It's a door crusher. Yeah, so now all the carbon dioxide that's trapped in there, deleted. Meaning you can just dump as much carbon dioxide in there as you want. Saves you sending gas up to space. Uh, over here, you've got an anti entropy nullifier. It's very weird to actually see these being used in late game bases. Just their, their cooling is quite minimal. But I suppose in this instance, it's quite useful because there's nothing that really needs an awful lot of cooling. Though, yeah, we've got the, uh, the heat being harvested from the rockets. It gets sent over here into these steam turbines. The steam turbines cooled by the anti entropy nullifier. Uh, over here, where is it? We have lots of food crops. Well, a couple of food crops going on here. We've got your nosh bean and we've got your sleet wheat. So the nosh bean is being run on ethanol. There's ethanol being produced to keep those nosh, nosh sprout going. That's very rare. Almost no one uses nosh sprout just due to the complications of, of raising them. They're, they're one of those very painful crops to work with. But sleet wheat, yep. Very simple. Water, coldness, done. Oh, bit of dirt as well. And what's this down here? Is that a temperature equalizer? Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's check the temperature overlay. Yeah, there's a lot of temperature equalization going on around here. My God. Yeah, I presume that's uh, regular getting chilled before it gets sent down to the shovels. Also, all of the heat from these rockets gets absorbed by the window tiles and dumped into, well, these two steam turbines on either side. This is the petroleum rockets over here. The liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Jesus. <laughs> that gets made over here and sent into these two rockets. Yeah, let's just take a, a bit of a zoom out here on this base. Oh, oh, yes. Now, you're going with a different type of miner set setup. It's still technically a C miner setup, but uh, in a completely different vein. What happens here is any uh, regolith that comes along falls right down here. Except for this miner. This miner can dig out the two miners to the left and one miner to the right. So even though these drills will probably get entombed in regolith, this miner will dig them out. And once they're dug out, they can dig out the next section, which can dig out the next section. Just a handy way they daisy chain it along, so the only thing these have to mine out is this here. At the same time, you do have to keep them cool, so what happens is there's some cooling loops going on here, but the the liquid just sort of sits along here. And I think it's been sort of, it's sort of poured down here, drops down to the bottom, and then gets picked up by that liquid pump at the bottom, and recirculated back into the cooling loop. So you see here, it goes all the way along across all these sea miners. There's one, two, three, yeah, three sea miners across there. I was pretty sure there was more than that, but... Honestly, it was a while since I started this map. There's so much going on in these. 
Nope. And here is a squeaky puff farm. All of the chlorine gas gets compressed up into here using door compressors because there's lots of door compressors. And then that all gets dumped over here and we're running a bunch of squeaky puffs. Yeah. But let's zoom this out here and start having a look at the overlays. This base. Oh my God. <laughs> These last two bases have just been enormous. Oh, before I continue with this, remember the way I couldn't figure out why that oxygen was down there? This oxygen setup down here? I finally figured it out. All the carbon dioxide is getting destroyed. It's getting sucked down here and it's getting destroyed in door cr crushers. So the door crushers down here are destroying all the carbon dioxide and heavier gases that float to the bottom. And this is just oxygenating the map and replacing all that carbon dioxide with nice clean oxygen. Oh man, so many door compressors and stuff going on here. Wait, is there, is there more over here? I think, yep, these would also be carbon dioxide. Wait, what are they getting rid of? Oxygen? Never mind, I think there are door, door destroyers as well that are also destroying all the carbon dioxide. Yeah, this is a late game map gas re replacement. Oh, uh, and this one, yes, I almost forgot about this. This here is just been switched on, but it, it hasn't got time to spin up. And every time I try and fast forward the game to spin it up fully, yeah, the game has a tendency to crash out. It's probably just the last of what this game can handle in terms of torturing the game mechanics. This here is a regolith melter. It turns regolith and melts it down into magma and then turns it into igneous rock. The first one of these I ever saw was by Cohen Visser. Uh, I think they're, they're pretty much the first video I ever saw of any one of these was Cohen Visser. Some people suggested it or had uh, stuff in sandbox mode, but no one ever actually made one before Cohen. And this is a, a similar design, but uh, their own spin on it. Yet there's, the magma comes in from down here and gets door compressed up to flow into this counter flow. The magma ends up over here, the temperature gets sucked out of it, it gets dumped across lots and lots of temperature. But what's happening here is the regolith comes in and it flows through here gaining temperature until it gets hot enough that it melts off the rail. Once it melts off the rail, it exchanges a bit of temperature with here, turns right back into igneous rock, which gets picked up by here, by this. Igneous rock gets dumped into this conveyor loader and sent all the way up here to go counterflow back through the counterflow heat exchanger. Uh, there we go, you can see it. You can see some of it's actually melting, it gets picked up and then it counterflows back through here. Now, one of the great things about this is igneous rock it has a higher heat capacity. So I think we've covered this many times before, but the specific heat capacity of igneous rock, which I can't see right there. Ah, there we go. Igneous rock is one. So it has a specific heat capacity of one. Regolith has a heat capacity of 0 0.2. So it just means that when you melt the regolith, turn it into magma, which then solidifies into igneous rock, you've increased its heat capacity by five times, just generating a bunch of heat. And the way you well, preheat it is you just send the igneous rock back through all of these metal tiles. You'll see it here. As it goes back through, it heats up the metal blocks. The other, the regolith coming through, takes sucks up the heat from the metal. It's effectively a counterflow heat exchanger, just using shipping rails and a lot, a lot, lot of iron ore. And then that flows all the way back through here. So this is sort of a preheat chamber that preheats all the regolith as it comes in. It comes in at 127, it leaves the other side at 1300. And this is, as I said, only warming up. So this is only going to keep getting faster and faster. Then once it's finished going through all of the counterflow heat exchanger, it comes out the other side. It's still got lots of heat in it. Five times more heat than it dumped into the, uh, the regolith going the opposite direction. And it flows through here, going zigzagging up all the way. Back down again, zigzag up, back down again, zigzag back up, back down again. The whole point of this is it's dumping heat into these tiles, which then gets dumped into these steam turbines. And yes, this may look like a lot of steam turbines, but the regolith will run that much. These things generate enormous amounts of power. It's incredible. And I'm not going to let this game run anymore because I'm afraid it's going to crash out for like a sixth time. It takes a long time to load this map, believe it or not. Anyway, let's have a... Yeah, that's a hell of a freaking build. Let's uh, zoom out here and have a quick look at the overlay, shall we? That is the plumbing overlay, and I am not unpausing the game. I just, yet yeah, that, oh my god, so much piping. Look at it all. That is an incredible amount of piping. The game's got to calculate each one of those blobs every second, so that's that's probably going to take a lot of resources. Conveyor overlay. It's, it's hard to see here, but this entire map is just covered in them. There's one conveyor rail going the entire right-hand side of the map to bring down that regolith for the regolith melter. All of this stuff over here, it's just so much conveyor rails. Those things are expensive. It's like 100 kilos of uh, raw, raw uh, metal ore to make that. Dear Lord, I don't think I've ever seen that many before. Gas overlay, yeah, that, that's impressive. But yeah, the plumbing was still <laughs> more insane. And the power overlay, oh God, I really thought this was going to be more terrifying. But this is, 
No, it's still terrifying, but in a sort of a, oh my God, that's so much metal sort of way. How much material does it take? I get, that's a, a main power spine there. That's 100 kilos of refined metal all over the place for all of those main power spines. Oh my God. Nicely done. Hey, big thanks again to, to Nomen for that map. That is that is a that is a work uh, that is a labor of love right there. If there ever ever you saw one, also a big thanks to Latviga for their map. They just uh, I, I present the maps in the order that they come in, so I just happened to get to three thousand plus cycle bases in a row, which have completely swamped this entire episode. Normally I try and do three people, three episode, three ah, maps in an episode. So I spent a little bit longer maybe going through two maps, but there was so much to explore in these. I hope you enjoyed exploring them as much as I did. Anyway, uh, good luck.